What's up? You are definitely watching this video because you might be a racing pilot, you might be a new guy, you might be a freestyle pilot. The one thing that we all have in common, being a viewer of this video right now, is that we're dealing with Express LRS. And that is going to be the communication protocol from your remote of some kind to your drone, your most likely FPV drone. There's a lot of quirks to it, there's a lot of settings, it's open source and it's very, very powerful, much like a lot of open source things. However, there's so much information out there that it's hard to find what you really wanna know, I guess. So, <laughs> being a racing pilot and freestyle pilot and filming pilot myself, I wanted to do a deep dive for you guys with my friend Charles, who knows way more about Express LRS than I do, and he can give us a lot of tips. Um, on the best settings you should be using, on how to do these really cool like variable power things, on how to, what settings you should use for long range, what settings you should use for racing, what power is necessary. He just knows, he's a wealth of knowledge and we're very lucky to have him here at 533. So wanted to share that with you all and also selfishly learn a little bit myself. Um, so we're gonna go inside and the nice thing that I will preface all this with is even if you have um, a different remote like we're gonna be doing it on like a Ranger module today if you have any Express LRS module even if it's like internal built-in then a lot of these should apply the only thing that won't be the same is like maybe the power output uh, ability like the Ranger Pro can go up to like a thousand or like a watt or something um, but even if yours can't a lot of the concepts will be the same so hope you find some value in this we'll also probably throw in a clip of how to bind Express LRS um, and just hope you can learn the best settings that we would recommend for all different types of Express LRS. I hope you learn, or hope we all learn, some tips and tricks along the way. So thanks for watching, and let's go ask Charles, let's go interrogate Charles. The Express LRS Master. You're an Express LRS connoisseur. Is, would you consider that true? Uh, I would say so. I started uh, using Express LRS back in the day when you had to flash it to R9 hardware. Uh huh. I mean, you were like, dude, it's the future. And I was like, oh, well, what? Look it was this. the future for me because it was cheap. So. Yeah, and That's now it's like me. what everybody uses because it's turned, it's become pretty powerful. Yeah. So a lot. Of, I basically want this video to be like tips and tricks as to what little things, like for racing, what mode do you use? For long range, what mode do you use? Do you have variable power? Do you use telemetry? Uh, do you use the Lua? Like just give us as much information as possible about like if you were to explain to somebody, if you were to take this brand new module and you were to change, like yesterday I like look over and you like had my, he like had my radio in his hand and he was like changing all these things and he's like, oh, you have this cool feature now. But if you were somebody to hand you their radio and then they're gonna go race, and then you would set up some settings and then they were going to go freestyle and then you would put like whatever settings on there. That's what I basically want you to describe in as short a way as possible. So first of all, what module do you use or recommend? I uh, use the, uh, the Radio Master Ranger module. Okay. Um, Are there any modules that you would like stay away from necessarily? Um, I think, I don't know about stay away from, but the ones I would choose are the Happy Model one, Okay. the Radio Master one. And honestly, those are the ones I've only used. And like, does, does there a minimum power output you think you need? Like, what do you, what is like a racer or freestyler? Like, doesn't have to go super long range, but what do you realistically need power output wise if somebody is looking for a module not from one of those companies? Um, at least 250 milliwatts. Okay, and that, that should be plenty? That should be plenty. Because sure. I, like this thing's like, you could talk to NASA with this thing, but like, it's honestly unnecessary power. And it's huge yeah. and like, it, again, like you said, you don't really need it. It's nice to have, but if you have good antenna setups. Exactly. And for the long range, like this is great. Sure, that's long awesome. Long range for sure. Uh, but but racing 250 is... And you've gone good. so far on 250 milliwatts. Yeah, we've, we've put up dynamic power and it shows us the, the output power in the OSD. And yeah. like we're super far away. Sometimes it's a 25 milliwatts. Yeah, it's so. insane. Okay, so, so yeah. show us the settings. So yeah. So you'll so, go into the Lua, right? So yeah. So you're going to go into... Radio settings, you're going to get to the Express LRS Lua script. And this is on Edge TX. Yep. Okay. Obviously, you're going to want to be on the highest firmware. So that would be, at the time of this video, that's like 3.0 and above, right? At least 3.0 and above, stuff like that. Okay. And then, so, what you're going to want to do for racing, I like 
F500 or D500? Yeah, I use D500 because you told me previously that it was the best. And then all of a sudden, Charles shows up in the field and is like, I'm running F500. So it gets pretty complicated. F500, I would use just by myself. D500, I would use at races. What? D500 like why? is giving you a little bit of redundant signal. It sends out every packet twice. So it's a thousand hertz, but sends it's out a thousand every... hertz. Uh. It sends every packet twice. So you get like a double chance to get every packet. <laughs> okay. But. <laughs> F five hundred's lower latency. F five hundred, you have to wait for the second packet every single time. Uh huh. So it's a little bit more end to end latency. Uh -huh. Not that much. Okay, but and for then, when when at a big race like I O, big race or where there's a lot of pilots, you'd use D five hundred. D five hundred. But when you're by yourself, F five hundred. Sure. Okay. Copy that. And then what other so settings? This is the settings I have right now. F five hundred. I have race telemetry. Oh, what's that mean? Race telemetry means that you have telemetry when you're disarmed. And then you have oh. no telemetry. I armed. wondered what that meant. Okay. And so, like, you don't want telemetry while you're racing because mm -hmm. telemetry actually gives you a little bit of jitter. Mm. And so jitter. What does that mean? Jitter is like it'll it'll wait for a, a signal back, and so the latency will spike. Oh, so it's I'm not, not. I'm not exactly. I know. Sure, I, I mean, this is this is great. Basically, Beta Flight wants a smooth signal. Okay. Um. So. No telemetry while you're racing. And race, to, like when you said telemetry ratio to race, that's what that yes, does. Yeah. Okay. And then um, what do you get when the, you're disarmed? Oh, you what? just get like the normal telemetry. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. And then model match, I don't use any of the model match settings. What about switch mode? What's that mean? Switch mode, it really doesn't matter. Um, either wide or hybrid, mm -hmm. really doesn't matter for racing. Racing, we don't need anything special. We just need a few switches for okay. arm, turtle mode. Um, VTX yeah. on a switch, stuff like that. Yeah. And so here's oh, here's the magic. I use okay. um, I do use like the VTX admin stuff. It's very useful. You can go in here. And change oh, that's where you can change it when you power on your quad. Yeah. It just goes right there. Oh, and you need telemetry to use. Oh. Um, VTX admin. Copy. Like what about does that work on HD zero or no? Yeah, it does. But even if you solder up HD zero on MSP instead of yeah. So Beta Flight has its own like. Uh, Express OS tells Betaflight to update the settings, and uh -huh. then the settings update uh -huh. the speed. That's sick. Okay. That's super useful. So. Oh, how do, I want to know how you set up this dynamic. Yeah. This is one of my favorite things to do. Is so, this what you set up on mine at the field? Yes. Okay, gotcha. So I have, this is what I normally run back in the day. So. Okay. I would just run 100 milliwatts, no dynamic power. Okay. This is just 100 milliwatts all the time. And then once you turn dynamic power on, now you have variable output power. Okay. And this is based off your RSSI and your telemetry, um, your RSSI and your link quality. Okay. And so basically this will go from your minimum, which is about 25 milliwatts, uh -huh. all the way to the maximum power that you set, which can, for my module goes up to a thousand milliwatts. Okay. And so, but are um, you are you not a, like have you you've never had any problems with this? Because what I was always afraid of with dynamic power is like you're at a race and somebody like maybe powers on something right next to you, and then like your radio like doesn't increase the power fast enough. Like is that not a worry? Yeah. So well, here's the trick: because you have race telemetry on, mm -hmm. you have telemetry when you're disarmed, and you lose telemetry when you arm. Okay. And so when you turn on dynamic power, you're sitting there disarmed, about to fly, because this link quality is so good, your quad's gonna be, or your radio's gonna be at 25 milliwatts, or whatever the lowest yeah. power is. Uh -huh. But as soon as you arm, you lose telemetry sync, and so your radio will just automatically bump up to oh, your max power. Oh, that's how you do and it. And then when you disarm again, you get back telemetry, uh -huh. and then it comes back down to power, and then you unplug your quad, uh -huh. and your module just stays at 25 milliwatts. So basically, as you're armed, you have 250 milliwatts or whatever your max power is. Uh -huh. And then when you're disarmed, it's variable. Yeah, so you leave the radio on all day, it's sitting at 25 milliwatts all day. Uh -huh. As you're flying, it jumps up to max power. Interesting. Yeah. And the only way that that would not be the case is if you weren't using race telemetry and it you had to, like, how would you make it to where it's like real dynamic power, where it's like, Real dynamic. Power. Yeah. What would you change to get that setting? In that case, that'd I be for use, like long ranging or filming or something. Yeah, for long range stuff, 
I wouldn't use to race telemetry. I would just use, there's a whole bunch of ratios Whoa. that you can set by yourself. Uh-huh. But the best thing to do is just put it to standard. Okay. Standard will just give you the best telemetry ratio for whatever okay. um, update rate you're using. Okay. And then last question is uh, for freestyle or racing. Or, I mean, freestyle or like filming. Say you want to go, you want something as robust as possible. Latency doesn't matter as much. Like for racing, of course, we want high late or low right, latency. Right. But for like filming, you just want something that's robust and works. And like this is a guy who wants to go long range with his buddies or whatever. What should um, this guy set his? Uh... Um, I don't. I'm not a big long range guy or a film guy, but I can give you some general tips. Yep. Basically, you'll see an F mode and you'll see D mode. Okay. F mode and D modes are for FLRC. FLRC is really fast, really responsive, <laughs> but. Um, they lack a bit of range. Mm. And so the ones that are just regular numbers, mm. 250, 150, stuff like that. Okay. These are low raw modes. And low raw can get you really, really far. This okay. can get you like super stable mm. um, link quality. Signal but it's more t- maybe a little bit more latency. A little bit more latency. Honestly, not that much. But when you get to the lower refresh rates on low raw that's when you can start to go really far so that would be like like so 50 hertz you can go really <laughs> yeah. 50 hertz. but like sometimes your quad might jitter like your like beta flight won't like that right like uh you like you it's realistic to do like maybe go down to a minimum 150 or something but like right if you really wanted to push it go 50 right but like for most freestyling 150 should be more than enough right 150 and 250 should get you plenty of range okay stuff like that yeah. copy um, well, like I said, Charles has been a ELRS connoisseur for a long time, and uh, I just learned something along the way. I hope you guys did too. And uh, if you fail safe at a race or filming, then you can blame him. So I'm just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> hope you guys learned something, and uh, let me know if you guys like this type of content. I think it's super useful as just Express ELRS is something that's getting more and more popular and common, um, and to kind of have a tips and tricks from somebody who's been using it for arguably yeah just about longer than anybody else out there um and the grand scheme of things it's pretty cool to get their take on things so hope you guys enjoyed uh, i'll put a little clip in here as far as uh from an old video as far as how we like to bind or the success um had success there and hope you guys enjoy and learn something about express lrs see you guys and have a good one